All right, we're rolling. This is a promotion video. So in this video, I ride around on my electric unicycle and talk about things related to poker on what's going on. Today, we're going to cover 4-Bet Pots and GTO Plus and how I use that software. Uh, currently, this unicycle ride, I'm in New Jersey. Um, in Summers Point, New Jersey, which is around Ocean City and Atlantic City. And I'm taking a ride here on the unicycle, um, you know, back through this sort of like island area uh, into Ocean City, New Jersey. So we have about a 20 minute ride here. Um, I sped it up a little bit. Uh, we're doing about 25 miles per hour, though. It's really cool riding on the road like this because it allows you to ride a lot faster because um, you just see cars going so much faster so you're kind of like more amped to go so i'm actually doing about 30 miles per hour most of the time on my king song um, electric unicycle but uh, that's not the point of this video we're going to talk about poker here in a second but the entire overall point of me creating content like this is to give back uh, something to poker but also to connect with people who are interested in doing sort of like-minded uh, things that are big inside and outside of poker, you're going to see a lot of sort of things dropped in the lower left hand corner. And what that is are things that I'm currently working on and looking to collaborate with other people who may have some of those skill sets. So if that's you, uh, if you're interested in collaborating with something on me or working with me in poker, um, you can find me in the comments or on my discord. All right. All that to say is let's get into how to study uh, new spots with GTO. What this is I'm going to show is how I originally constructed a strategy um, in 4-Bet Pots. For the most part, I think a lot of people play the same way. We're looking at a small blind versus worthy hero in the button 4-Bet position. I think most people play usually about a 25% uh, range C bet as a default in four bet pots. Um, that was my strategy uh, for a while. And I figured, hey, you know, maybe I can improve upon that. So I loaded up a new aggregate database and set some new parameters that we're just going to go through and kind of talk about the differences and figure out whether the strategy is better or not. So on the right here, you can see there's a little graph and this is tracking about 163 flops that GTO Plus provides. And we're measuring our equity versus our EV. So down here, when we see a flop like this, um, the lowest equity EV flop on this hand is 1098 suited. And all the way, if we move up here to the upper right, our highest equity and EV hand is Ace Ace King suited. And in between is just kind of everything else. So um, one way of using this feature is basically, you know, once you have a new database, you always kind of want to figure out how to look at what your lowest, your worst hands are to make sure you kind of are playing them, you know, very cautiously and optimistic, optimistically. Um, but then, you know, your best hands are in these upper right. So you want to play them well. And then everything kind of in between is, you know, you're, you're just going to mix a lot. That's actually Atlantic City way over there um, where you can see where my mouse is uh, just off to the left of the screen there. Those buildings are, that's where we're looking at Atlantic City at the moment. And then it's Ocean City, New Jersey uh, to the right. So um, this strategy here when the four bet caller checks to us, we had the option of betting 22% pot or all in. Um, well, is that even a good strategy? Does that make sense? Let's take a look. Is the all in option even worth anything and relevant to us? So if we can sort our database of aggregated flops by the all in option in position, it's really only using all ins a few percentages of the time. It's really not even knowing uh, worthwhile to know that you need an all in because the only time the solver is really using it is on a 432 rainbow and ace eight six uh monotone and a king nine eight and look it's just not even using it you know it's using it less than a third of the time so overall you know we've created a strategy with an all-in option that it's basically never using in position as a four better which is highly contrasted if you're an out of position four better um, that's not exactly the entire scope of this video to go through that, but as an in position for better, solvers are just never gonna be basically jamming to get it in. Um, 
So we can maybe do something better with that option. 25% as a C-bet, a range C-bet. Look, it doesn't even universally like that. There's no 100% C-bet that it's following through with a 25% si sizing. Ace-King Jack, Ace-8-6, you know, Ace-Ace-King, King-8-3. These are all in the high 90s, so we can kind of default to a range bet, but it doesn't even like it that much. Um, and then we also have these like checking strategies that seem really, really high. Look at all these checkbacks. You know, boards that make sense, like a 10 9 8, uh, Queen Jack 8. You know, things where there's straights out there, the solver is definitely going to play more cautiously, but it's still checking an extremely high amount on even boards like 9 6 6, you know, Queen 9 3, 7 6 4. These are all essentially checkbacks. Um, is that the best strategy to be checking back when you have initiative and a range advantage? Um, I, I like to, to bet. I like to bet more often if I can. So I wanted to sort of test out if I could find a way to find more bets. And so I created a different database strategy. And this strategy, when it's checked to, this is same ranges, same borders and everything like that. Our options are to bet 43% or 15%. So we have a really small bet and we have about a 40% bet. What is that going to afford us to do? Let's take a look at the database and see. Oh, I think I skipped a little bit in this video. Did it do that all wrong? Oh, no, no. Excuse me. All right. So, yeah, we're going over a uh, bridge into Ocean City right now. Um, just catching up on that. But anyway, back to the hands. Um, let's look at the strategy now when we have two bet sizes that are not all in. They're basically smaller bet sizes and the check as well. Well, interesting, this 40% ish bet, it looks like the solver is going to use that a ton. And what are the main boards here? They're like King X. It looks like it vastly prefers you know, this 40% pot bet on King X board. So we're already kind of learning and seeing something there that we have a bigger bet option available to us on King X's. And this smaller size, it just, you know, it, it does it a lot. There's a ton of boards here where it can just bet smaller and checks. Well, we still have a lot of checkbacks. Uh, a lot of the super wet boards you know, nothing seemed to be really too different there, right? Um, overall, though, we can see at the bottom that this strategy is checking about 55% of the time compared to our previous strategy of 64% of the time. Now, I think that's a, a great improvement. And the overall EV of this strategy is just uh, like 0.2 higher. So something that is checking less um, and has a higher EV, that means it's just being a little bit more aggressive, uh, is something that I'm going to prefer as a strategy. I'd prefer to be able to bet more to put a, you know my opponents in more difficult spots. And so I'm really curious about this strategy already um, looking at it. What you can do is take some of the data that GTO Plus will provide in table form and you can throw it into you know your spreadsheet app. And here I've done that. I have, I'm looking at my two different strategies. So that's my new one of betting 44 and you know like 15 percent or so and this is my old strategy here of betting even all in or 25 percent and so what i really did is i checked to see if the smaller ev is greater than the newer ev right if my small ball strategy is better than my old strategy and look at all these trues just just going down the line um this is pretty much holding everything else constant you know, my small ball strategy of having two small bet sizes seems to be preferred pretty much across the board. And there's places where it's not not preferred, where these things are false, like Jack-10-9, Jack-10-5. But if you look at the EV differences here, it's incredibly small. I mean, there's almost no EV difference. Now, that's really important to do because a lot of strategies you're going to find when you do work like this are basically true more true in one direction um you know say more like polarizing boards and they're a little bit different in you know the middling to wet boards the strategy is going to uh vary very greatly but for the most part going through all this it really seems that 
I am creating a higher EV strategy when I play this small two bet strategy. The next thing to notice about that is I wanted to find out if the difference in the amount of checking was greater than 10 and what so that difference may be. I think you're going to find a lot of information when you look at this and you're going to be able to have a better strategy. So for example, I'm looking now at Ace of Spades, Jack of Spades, Three of Spades. Now in the one strategy, my two bets of small size, I'm checking about 30% of the time. Um, and in my strategy of only betting quarter pot or all in, it's checking 52% of the time. So that's, you know, 20% difference. It's pretty meaningful. Um, when you're creating a strategy here, would you rather be checking that much more often or would you rather be betting to apply pressure? Here's another example of a board. We're looking at King, King, Seven. 26% difference where on a King, King, Seven with the small ball strategy, it's betting 85% um, of the time at the like 45% pot size bet. Conversely, if it's the quarter pot C bet, it's only C betting like 68% of the time and checking back 31% of the time. If you're creating a strategy, I think if you see a flop of king, king, seven, wouldn't it be make more sense to be betting larger, you know, about 40% pot more often? Wouldn't that make your hand easier to play? So <clears throat> I've definitely been intrigued buy these options and it's kind of going through and studying and learning this strategy that you kind of just start to figure out how solver solver starts to play a lot of these hands and boards differently um and kind of what it means when it comes to your own range construction when you get in these hands you know should i be getting away with smaller bets um bigger bets you know the frequencies and things like that what are the kind of the determining characteristics of these boards uh, here's example another monotone board where on the king of spades, five of spades, three of spades, with my new strategy, it's betting small, 15%, 80% of the time, where in the old strategy, it was betting for a quarter, 60% of the time, checking back 40%. Um, maybe that's, you're more comfortable, you know, playing back more checks. My strategy creation is definitely wanting to find more reasons to bet. So I'm, I'm definitely really intrigued buy this i think there is some promise here and so what i'm going to do and what you have to do is then you just go back to the data and you just kind of start exploring a little bit um some of the differences and you learn kind of how it plays some of the hands and the ranges and it's really easy to do all this in gto plus i'm going to show you for example right now we're going to sort by we already looked at equity and v EV, but now we're going to sort by the EVs and checks. And we have a graph like this. And so this is a really pretty simple way to start finding out what our high EV, all our high checks are right up here, right? That's our Y axis and our X axis is our EV. And as you can see, all these really high EV hands down here, King five two, you know, is one. These are all betting. These are all betting at a nice clip. You know, they're rarely checking. Ace eight six, that one is preferring a small ball 15% strategy, but that uh, king six three, you know, I mentioned before, king highs are preferring the 45%, so there's a big bet there. And so you start of how, at least how I use GTO Plus, is you start to look at these extremes of the graphs and you learn how to play where are my strong checks and why is it doing this and then where you know where are my strong value bets and why is it doing that and you kind of learn and figure out what the patterns are and then in between is the middle and all the mixes and it becomes really kind of interesting to follow along and start of learning more of the nuance along there um, what i like to do then is i like to start taking uh, specific hands so how do you play aces in my new strategy We can just sort by the same kind of breakdown there of, uh, should we do? All right, so EV to checking um, of aces. On most of these boards at the top, we're gonna find all of our checks, all of our high EV checkbacks. Why does it like to check back aces? It looks like, like a board like eight, four, three, seven, five, three, 
7-3-2. So all these extremely high EV checkbacks, we can start to figure stuff out. Why is Solver doing that? Well, it's because aces don't really need protection and you need to show up with stronger pairs on the turn and river. Uh, you can afford to give cards away, especially in a four bet pots, because pairs are generally the winner um, in a four bet pot. Um, so this is a view for Ocean City. We're now leaving Ocean City. This is kind of a famous bridge. If you've ever been to Ocean City, New Jersey, uh, you'll probably recognize it, at least in its newest iteration, but we are leaving Ocean City headed back towards Summers Point, New Jersey. Uh, I just wanted to mention that for the video. So checking back aces, we're already kind of learning, like maybe aces are just not a high bet hand. Um, where are aces being bet for the small 15% bet? We can look at that. We have all these bets that are coming in around here. It's just a great way to inform and look at where are aces being bet and where are they being checked back? And then kind of what's in the middle? A board like 432 is uh, being bet at the larger size, the smaller size, and the check size, almost a third, a third, and a third. That's interesting. You know, that's where we need to start figuring out our mixed strategy. Let's look at another hand, a uh, class that people will find themselves often in. Um, this is Ace of Hearts, King of Hearts. How often is this Ace of Hearts, King of Hearts betting? It looks like it bets small on a lot of boards where it has top pair, top kicker, like ace nine two, ace queen four, ace nine six, ace eight three, and continuing downwards. Betting small with a lot of top pair, top kickers on kind of dry, non vulnerable boards. Where does it start to bet bigger? King, king seven, king seven two, king six three. Like we established earlier, earlier, it really likes to do that on all the king high boards um, with top pair, top kicker. So we're already kind of like seeing a bit of a strategy difference. Um, and we're able to start to develop some of our own heuris heuristics for playing this uh, strategy. I would consider this part of like the learning of the strategy. What you do is you just start figuring out a lot of things like the entire equity of your entire range. So my entire range is equity is as high as 70% on a board like Ace Ace King, all the way down to 40% on a board like 10 9 8 uh, suited. <clears throat> so we have this nice range of equities that we're going to be having to figure out. Uh, a lot of them are actually falling in between 50 and like 55%. So there's going to be a lot of nuance in here that we're going to have to figure out. And we do that through training and just discovery, um, which we'll go into GTO Plus it has its own range trainer. So I'll show you some more ways to kind of just like look around and get a feel for what the different um, sort of hands are and everything like that in the range and how you look at that. But really the meat and potatoes of once you start to figure out a strategy is you take it into the range trainer and you figure out in your head basically what is the equity of my hand and what is the equity of my range and we just established that the equity of our range is going to be between like 75 and 40 something percent so good to know right um then we can know what ranges favor us and once we know what our high let's say ev ranges are and our high bet size ranges are where do we want to bet large right we've already established it's a lot of king x boards um where do we want to be using a lot of our small bets that are high ev a74 a86 all these kind of boards where do we not want to be using what is a high ev high check board high checks well there's not a ton of high checks high EVs. Our highest EV is down here, right? And it's not checking at all. So these are the boards that we really want to nail down. Um, if we're seeing an opportunity like a King 6-3 or an Ace King 6, well, did you know on King 6-3, you know, as we talked about, you're going to be wanting to use the larger size. And on an Ace King 6, you're going to be wanting to use a smaller size. So you have to start learning and developing kind of heuristics like this. And it's really easy in GTO Plus to kind of see where the extremes are. Um, and then kind of figure out and deduce backwards th strategy through there. 
It's a really awesome piece of software. Um, so what I'll do at this point basically is after I start to look at a strategy and I've kind of mucked around and I've checked the Excel to make sure it's interesting and viable is what you'll do is you just pull up the range trainer and you should have Flopzilla as well. I won't include Flopzilla uh, in this part of it, but the general idea is you just pull up a range trainer and just start figuring out it or run through all the aggregated flops and you just got to figure out what you do. Now, here we can see on this particular board, which is Jack of Spades, Six of Spades, Nine of Diamonds. Um, we have Ace Jack, we have Top Pair, Top Kicker. We can look and see that overall, our range prefers to check about 80% of the time. And it likes to, basically, if it is gonna check, um, usually that's coupled with a more polarizing bet, right? If they're doing checkbacks, you're doing a larger polarizing bet. So it is using its larger option about, uh, you know, one fifth of the time, 20%. Our particular hand, we can find out down here, prefers a check 96% of the time. And our overall hand equity is about uh, 60%. Pretty cool. So we would just, in this spot, we would need to learn that we're playing a lot of checkbacks and top pair, top kicker is not making into the polarization. So we would check and we come to our turn and now we can deploy a turn strategy. Um, we're far ahead, our equity is increased to about 80% on a blank. And we just fire a bet and get a call. And what do we think we're losing to here? Nine, nine maybe? It's probably gonna be a strong hand if we're behind. King, kings don't usually slow play. Aces just seem reduced by combinations, but queen, queen, that's a pretty fair assessment. So, what I'll do is when I, after I created the strategy and I've started to learn about what the equities and the betting frequencies and everything like that are, is you take it into the trainer and you just do the reps. You start doing tons of reps. And if a hand looks really curious to you, you're not really sure why, then you just go into that board and you just start to figure out, figure out the range construction, 10, nine, nine. Um, this is a highly uh, advantageous board to check back even though we have a lot of high equity, or this is kind of, we learn that we do a lot of checkbacks, and then with these high equity hands, we just start putting in two street bets on the turn and river. Here's a 653. What are we gonna do here? Uh, primarily, this is a checkback strategy. Um, so we're gonna check back. We're well protected by aces when we do this, as we saw. Uh, when we get donked into on the turn, the solver just greatly prefers a fold here um, with ace king. We're well protected. It can call about half the time. So that video is kind of, uh, I guess, long, and I hope it gave a basic kind of overview of how to start using GTO Plus to craft some strategies and then how to train them out and figure it out. Uh, this particular one for four bet pots, I think is really interesting because four bet pots don't come up a ton, right? Uh, you may be in a few of them, you know, per session. Um, when you can pull up a range trainer and do thousands of reps, of four bet pots and really get to know them the few times that you're in them in a session you're probably going to absolutely smash them out of the park which is i think really advantageous uh, you know a lot of people work backwards in poker where they say like oh you know the most common spots you need to know those well so you're not bleeding you know like a, a tenth of a bb at a clip or something like that but it's also just as important to know the spots that are less common but still expected and just you know if you can hone in and craft in uh, your knowledge of those areas and really dial it in, you'll have a tremendous advantage when these spots come up because you've just put in tons of work at the gym and you won't really need to be updating and figuring that out as often. So I uh, appreciate you watching. This is now, <laughs> we're just chilling back in Summers Point. We're about a minute from where we started. And uh, that was my video for today on how to use GTO Plus to start doing some training repetitions. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions or comments, you can find me in the video comments or there's a link to my Discord in the notes. Thanks a lot, have a blessed day.